Hi, I'm Tall from Tall's Garage. Today I'm going to walk you through setting camshaft timing on a Subaru single overhead cam EJ25. I had this engine out and on an engine stand when I took these pictures, but you can just as easily follow this procedure with the engine in place. This video isn't meant to replace the service manual procedure, but it may give you a better overview of how to set camshaft timing and maybe clear up some questions you have after reading through the service manual procedure. The engine we're looking at on the screen is out of a 2005 Subaru Impreza. Let's start with a quick orientation. In the center is a crankshaft sprocket. Note the timing mark, timing mark in the front as well as on the back side of the sprocket. These are in the 12 o'clock position and aligned with a timing mark on the engine block that's right here. EJ25 cam timing is not set at top dead center. With these marks aligned as shown, the pistons are all at mid stroke. This provides clearance between the valves and piston tops so that you can rotate the cams into the correct timing position without having the valves strike the piston tops. This is camshaft sprocket number one. This is the cam timing mark on the sprocket. The mark is oriented at the 12 o'clock position and is also aligned with the cam cap and the cylinder head matching surface right in here. I'll move on to camshaft sprocket number two. Note the timing mark here. It is also at the 12 o'clock position and aligned with a notch in the timing cover right here. Now once the, the crankshaft sprocket and both cam sprockets are aligned, the timing belt can be installed. The timing belt has a dashed paint mark right here. The dashed line paint mark is positioned on the crankshaft sprocket timing mark just like this is shown in the picture here. The timing belt also has two other painted marks that are solid lines. The mark that aligns with cam sprocket number one is 44 teeth away from the crankshaft sprocket dashed paint mark. It will align with the timing mark on cam sprocket number one and be aligned with the cam cap and cylinder head matching surface just like it's shown on the picture here. The other solid timing paint mark on the belt for the cam sprocket number two is 40 and one half teeth away from the crankshaft sprocket. It will align with the timing mark on cam sprocket number two right here. I've got another picture. I'm going to change views here. It gives a little bit different view of the cams and the crankshaft properly lined and the belt in position. This gives a really good view of cam sprocket number one and how the timing mark is aligned and how it's aligned with the cam cap and the cylinder cylinder head matching surface and also you can see that there's a solid painted line timing mark on the cam belt and how it's lined up with the mark on the cam sprocket. We'll move on to the crankshaft sprocket. You can see the dashed painted line and how it's matched to the timing mark on the crankshaft sprocket. And also too you can see cam sprocket number two, the solid painted line with the timing mark on that sprocket. At this point the camshafts are properly aligned and you can now remove the stopper pin from the belt tension adjuster. The pictures that we have been looking at are with the engine removed and with the engine on an engine stand. But just as a reminder this job can be done in situ. Here's a view of the timing marks correctly lined up with the engine still in the car. To finish up here's some tools that you may find helpful for this job. To hold the crank pulley while loosening or torquing the crankshaft pulley bolt I used a Matco Subaru crank pulley holder here on the left. It's designed to be used with a half inch drive flex handle. Another tool that does the same job is the Company 23 crank pulley tool. The new V2 design has an upgraded small pin reinforcement ring for loosening the toughest crank pulley bolts. For more information on this tool, you can go to the Company 23 website to download the manual or watch a demonstration video. The link is posted in the comment section below. To remove the camshaft seals and the crankshaft seal, I use this Lyle seal puller. I bought this one at O'Reilly's Auto Parts, but they're available wherever you buy Lyle tools or they're also available on Amazon. I'll post the Amazon link below. Then to install the new seals, I use these seal installers from ASF Machine. The Flatirons Tuning website sells these tools and also has videos demonstrating their use. Okay, that wraps it up. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below.